Bread and wine in the hands of a priest of God. What do I have in my hand? Can you recognize it? Yes. I have a reason for doing this because many times on Wednesday we're going to have breaking of bread. And I want to open the eyes of some of us to some of the things that we may not know. I'm quickly going to read Genesis. Genesis chapter 14. I'm going to read, because of time, I will just read from 13 to the end. Let me read from verse 12. Let me read from here because... So that we'll all be reading together. They also took Lot, Abraham's brother's son, who dwelt in Sodom. And they took his goods and departed. Then one who had escaped came and told Abraham, Abraham the Hebrew. What a derogative name, Abraham the Hebrew. For he dwelt by the terebinth trees of Mamre, the Amorite, brothers of Eskol, and brother of Ena, and they were allies with Abraham. Abraham. Now when Abraham heard that his brother was taken captive, he harmed his 318 trained servants who were born in his own house, and he went in pursuit as far as Dan. He divided his forces against them by night, and he and his servants attacked them, and they pursued them as far as Obat, which is north of Damascus. So he brought back all the goods and also brought back his brother, Lot, and his goods, as well as the women and the people. And the king of Sodom went out to meet him at the valley of Shavel, that is the king's valley, after his return from the defeat of Chedaloma, and the kings who were with him. Then Melchizedek, the king of Salem, brought out bread and wine, because he was the priest of God most <clears throat> and he blessed him and said, Blessed be Abraham of God most high, possessor of heaven and earth. And he blessed, blessed be God most high, who has delivered your enemies into your hand. And he gave him a tithe of all. Now the king of Sodom said to Abraham, Give me the persons and take the goods for yourself. But Abraham said to the king of Sodom, I have raised my hand to the Lord, God most high. High, the possessor of heaven and earth, that I will take nothing from a tread to a sandal strap, and that I will not take anything that is yours, lest you should pay, say I have made Abraham, Abraham rich, except only what the young men have eaten and the portion of the men who went with me, Ena, Eskor, and Mamre, let them take their portion. Is that the end? Okay. Now, what was happening here? <clears throat> there was a war of independence. Five kings, including... <clears throat> can I have some water, please? Thank you, sir. Five kings, including Sodom, they went to war of independence against four nations. They had been held captive for over 12 years. And because God was not with them, even though they were five and the other nations were four, the four nations defeated them. And all the th they captured the men, they captured all the things they had. And worse still, they captured the food that Sodom brought. And even worse, they captured Lot. Remember in Genesis chapter 12, God spoke to Abraham. 
<clears throat> and he made some big promises to him. Seven at least that I could count. He said, number one, I will make a great nation of your descendants. Two, I will bless you. Number three, I will make your name great. Number four, you shall be a blessing. Number five, I will bless them that bless you. And number six, I will curse them that curse you. Number seven, in you shall all the families of the earth be blessed. In other words, every blessing can be traced back to Abraham. When you are cursing somebody, you are wasting your time. Because anyone that curses you, God says, I will curse. When you curse a person, the punishment is not enough. But let God cause that person, you will know that it's a permanent issue. So, what happened there was that four nations conquered five nations and they took Lot along with them. And we are told in Genesis chapter 14, verse 13, that one man came to Abraham the Hebrew. That name was an insulting name, Abraham the Hebrew. Despite the promises that God gave him, somebody didn't know that level has changed. They were still calling him Abraham the Hebrew. There is someone here you don't know, but God is asking me to tell you that your level has changed. Yeah. You are seeing yourself with the eye of the president. But the God who has no beginning, who has no end, has seen your future. And he's saying that <laughs> what he knows about you, if you will only hear, you will start rejoicing and giving testimony even now. <laughs> so, when Abraham heard that Lot, his nephew, was captured, he wasn't worried when they said they lost the, 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 the battle. But when he heard because Lot was tied to Abraham by a covenant. So what did Abraham do? He went home. He took 318 men who were servants. Not soldiers. They were servants in his household. They were born in his household. And he took them to war against the four nations. Can you imagine people who were, I don't know whether it was wood that they were taking along to fight this war. I don't know what they took along with them. But they were 318 fighting for nations. And when they got there, something happened. Now, when God is in your battle, it is immaterial what you have. It is immaterial the kind of thing you are holding. This same God that could kill Goliath with a, with a sling is still the same God that you are worshiping. And he's still alive and well today. So when you look at your hand and you see and you think that what you have is small, you look at your pocket and your pay packet and you say, this money is small, it won't last till the end of June. I have good news for you. The God that, is able, that was able to destroy four nations with 318 servants is still on his seat and I will tell you, let me prophesy to you, that this month of June that we have celebrated so much here and heaven has recorded it, you will, the little you think you have in your hand, by the end of June you will have left and you will be rejoicing. You will be thanking God because God will make that small amount in your hand be, be able to do a lot more. There are some issues that you have and you are thinking, how am I going to go through? The God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, the God of Jacob is asking me to tell you that it has very little to do with you. If, I, uh, if you've listened to this morning's sermon, all what he wants is that you be faithful. He will fight your battles for you. The doors that have been locked, he is going to make a way. Those doors are going to fall down flat. In the name of Jesus. 
So, because of the, you know, the special blessings on Abraham, <clears throat> he was able to capture and he recovered everything, including the food that Sodom brought, that were captured by the people. Now, when I was reading this, I looked at Genesis chapter 13, verse 13, and I saw that the Bible tells us that Sodom, the people of Sodom were so wicked. Their history of wickedness had been, had started long ago. But unfortunately, that was where Lot, a connector to covenant promises, that was where he was living. It doesn't matter where you are living today. You found yourself in a, in a, you know, in a marriage that is messed up. But you are a child of God. There is something about you when you became a child of God that says that God is bound to fight your battle for you. It's a matter of time. You are going to sing songs of praises in the name of Jesus. So, when he was coming, when Abraham was coming from the slaughter of the kings, that's how the Bible puts it, slaughter of the kings. Two people were coming to meet Abraham. One of them was the king of Sodom. But one thing about God is this. When he sees that somebody is coming to meet you that can negatively influence you, he intervenes. So when the king of Sodom was coming, when I was reading that, I just saw that only a verse said the king of Sodom was coming to meet Abraham. And then there was a full stop. And the next thing I saw was that Melchizedek, the king of Salem, brought bread and wine. For he was a priest of the most high God. One thing I saw there was that God did not allow Abraham to meet the king of Sodom. He first of all made sure that heaven intervened. Many times we don't understand why God puts a break in the things we want to do. Many times he knows that our strength is little so that he wants to, you know, prepare us to meet the challenges. And that was why instead of the king of Sodom meeting Abraham first, somebody else came. His name the king of Salem, Melchizedek. And we are told that Melchizedek brought bread and wine because he was a priest of the most high God. Now, the question is, why did he bring bread and wine? He wasn't bringing bread and wine because he wanted to feed the soldiers. They had more than enough food with them. We are told that he brought bread and wine because he was a priest of the most high God. I would like you to open to Genesis. Genesis chapter 14, verse 18. Genesis chapter 14, verse 18. Can you put that on the screen for us? Genesis 14, verse 18. Now, when he brought bread and wine, then the king of Salem brought out bread and wine. He was a priest of the most high God. And then he began to bless Abraham. And he said certain things. He says, blessed be Abraham of God most high. This morning we were, the choir was singing about God most high. And the Lord opened my eyes to this thing. Abraham had worshipped many idols before. But there is a God. Higher than all gods. His name is the most high. And that, that the Abraham needed a revelation at that time. And re that revelation could only come by the enactment of a covenant. The covenant that made Melchizedek to bring bread and wine. It, God most high means that it, in the Hebrew you can call, it, call him Elohim. Okay, or El Elyon, meaning God most high. It means that this God that we are talking about is higher than all the gods 
of this world is higher than your problem, is higher than your disease, is higher than those who are sh- your bosses at work that, are, that believe that they, they are gods over your life. That is why he is called God Most High. And this is the God I am reminding you about this morning. That it does not matter the issue with your life. This God, because his name is most high, is higher than all those issues. It it, it doesn't take him a second to resolve that issue that you have been worrying yourself about. Because he's the most high. And he blessed Abraham. He said, blessed be Abraham of God most high. And he called another name of the most high God. He says, the possessor of the heaven and the earth. In other words, there is nothing formed that he had not made himself and that he doesn't own. He's the one that owns the cattle on the thousand hills. And he's the one that owns the thousand cattle on a single hill. He's still the same God. He owns everything. You are worried about how you will get this, how you will get that. He has them in his hands. If only you will enter a covenant with him, to bring forth such things. There are, I, I, we will get to that. Because many of you are going to have some testimonies concerning long issues. Things that have stayed with you for a long time. And this God, because he's most high, because he's the possessor of the heaven and the earth. You know, this God is the owner of all the visas in the U.S. Do you know that? The, the visa they are holding. When I was, tra- you know, I, I move around and I see vast land. You know, nobody living there. They don't even know what to do with the thing. They keep on walking and mowing the place. And, and then we have so many people who want to come. <laughs> and our father is the possessor of the land. He's the possessor of the heaven and the earth. This was the God. You know, Abraham needed that revelation. And why did he need that revelation? Because if he didn't get that revelation, by the time he got to king of Sodom, the king of Sodom will have you know, given him the impression that I'm giving you this, I'm going to make you rich. And Abraham wouldn't know what he knew. By the time that Abraham met the king of Sodom, and the king of Sodom said, well, you just take all the goods, give me the men. <laughs> Abraham said, level has changed. He said one thing. He said, I have lifted up my hands before the Lord most high, the possessor. The same language that (laughs) Melchizedek was using. He said, I have lifted up. What is the meaning of lifting up your hands? It means I have already made a covenant. When you see when they are swearing in precedence and so on, they put one hand on the Bible, they lift up their hands. When you see people in, uh, you know, in the occult, when they are making covenant, they will lift up one. It says, I have lifted up my hands to the Lord Most High, the possessor of the heaven and earth, that I will not receive anything from you, even to the last of issue, so that you won't think that you are the one that has made me rich. That would have been what would have happened if Melchizedek did not meet Abraham. And what was Melchizedek doing with bread and wine? Bread and wine are covenant foods. And that is one thing that many people don't know. Bread and wine in the hand of a priest, they are covenant foods. In other words, when people, you know, when, when, when they met, they probably would have pronounced curses. And they will have pronounced blessings. Because those are the things that happen during covenant meetings. But one good thing that I want you to know is this. Melchizedek was not an ordinary man. The blessings were f- secured. But the causes were cancelled. Because this Melchizedek had already before the beginning of time, he knew he would be hung upon a tree and cursed is he that hangs upon a tree. And because of that, he had canceled the curse aspect. Only the blessing aspect stayed that day. And I want to assure you today that every curse, whether they have reason to curse you or they are curseless, they will not stand. Yeah. They cannot stand. Because you will see later on, you know, what was Melchizedek? Let's open to the book of uh, Hebrews chapter 7. 
Hebrews chapter 7. So that I could, because of time, I just quickly go, it, go over it. From verses, <clears throat> verses 1 to 4, we see that Melchizedek was a priest of the Most High God, number one. Two, he was a type of Christ pre-incarnated. Okay? Remember one thing in John chapter 8. The Jews were telling Jesus, who are you? You small boy, you are not even 50. You are telling us that you will give people eternal life. And he said, your father Abraham rejoiced to see my day. And when he saw it, you know, he was glad. Who was, you know, when Jesus was, he said their father Abraham. You know, what was he saying? He was re- telling them about the meeting that he had with Abraham. Because the Bible tells us that he was a king of righteousness. He was a king of peace. He had no father and mother. He had no descendants. He has no beginning of life. He was a priest forever. I remember Jesus is a priest forever after the order of who? Melchizedek. He was greater than Abraham. And that was why he could bless the one who, who was given the promise. And he says, before Abraham was... I am. Those were the secret things that were happening during that meeting. Because he was there before Abraham met him. In fact, he was involved in the, in the, the victory of the battle. And that's why he was able to meet Abraham before the king of Sodom met him. He was more important than Abraham because the Bible tells us that it is the greater that we bless the lesser. So this Melchizedek was greater than Abraham who had all the promises. You know? And the Bible tells us that Jesus is a priest forever after the order of Melchizedek. Now, what did the bread and wine and the covenant, what did it do to Abraham? Number one, it gave Abraham a revelation of God which he didn't have. Which means that any time you see bread and wine and you are going to enact the covenant that Jesus told us about, that this is the new, you know, the blood, the new covenant in my blood, it means that you must be ready to receive special revelation. There are some things that God will reveal to you about your future, about your job, about how you can become increase in your life. That if you know what you are doing. So, bread and wine in the hand of a priest of God is the beginning of revelation, if you know it. Two, it's a time for blessing. Anytime you come together and you have bread and wine in the hand of a priest, it's a time for you to receive blessing. It's a time to receive protection. Because the king of Sodom could have derailed Abraham if not for the time he had with Melchizedek. I want to also say that let me, I'm trying to move fast because of time. Remember, who are we? Do you know who you are? You are working in power. You are walking in miracles. You live the life of favor. You know who you are. Let me tell you something. There is something that comes into you the day you give your life to the Lord. You become a covenant partner with God. And that's why when you are born again, the Bible tells us in 1 Peter 2, uh, 5 to 9, that you are what? You are a royal priesthood. A holy nation. You know that you become a priest. Anytime you then meet to share bread and wine, what happens? There are some blessings that come because you are now a, a priest and you have bread and wine in the hand of your priest. But one thing I want to quickly just tell you certain things that when, whenever you meet, you get together to break bread. Whenever you See yourself as a priest each time you hold this. See yourself as at that time that 
God is going to give you new revelations about what will make you better. See yourself as having the opportunity to receive anything you want from this God because he is God most high, the possessor of the heaven and the earth. So everything belongs to him and because of the covenant you are having with him, you are going to. Another thing you should see yourself as is that your eyes will be opened. Remember when after the resurrection of Christ and the disciples were going to Emmaus and Jesus met them and he was speaking to them. The Bible tells us that their eyes were closed. But when did their eyes open? When he went with them and he took bread and he broke it. And the Bible says their eyes were open. You know, that was the time of sharing bread and wine. It's a time when God will open your eyes to some things that you never knew. It's a time of victory over your enemy. It's a time of renewed spiritual life. You know, so anybody that eats this, uh, my, my body and my, my flesh, I will give him eternal, uh, eternal life. And I will raise him up on the last day. I am going to just say something and stop. Because there are some people here that God wants to do something special with you. I have a lot of testimonies. I have had challenges in life. There was a day I went to the hospital and about a month or six weeks ago, and this, you know, I did some tests, and they were alarmed. They said, what is happening, and so on. And I came home. They said I should come back in two weeks' time, that maybe it's infection or something. Two weeks, I, I was going to go back to them, and my wife said, let us break bread. And we broke bread. And when I got there, the same doctors, the same machine, the same chemicals, they did the test again. My reading jumped from 10.8 to 5.2. And they said, wrote there, that this reading is better than the one expected of a man of this age. I am telling you this so that you may know. I mean, it, there are so many things... I, I've told you, you may have several challenges. I went to do prostate test, and they said, I mean, I mean, I want to do a scan two years ago, and the volume was 83 point something. This year, I went to the same doctor, the same machine, the same name, and he did it, and he was looking at me. He said, I'm short. I said, what happened? He said, you know, your reading now is 31 instead of 83. I don't know what has happened. But the thing has wrong. I don't know what. And I, 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 it makes me to know one thing. That this miracle worker, this promise keeper, this you know, light in the darkness, he is still alive. It makes me to know that there is no issue that he cannot deal with. It makes me to know that when you are breaking bread and when you are drinking wine and it's in your hand as a priest of God, there is no miracle that is too difficult for God to do. Because the day a miracle becomes too difficult for God to do, then it's no longer God. But I know that this God that we serve is a God of all miracles. The job you are looking for, this God is going to make it come in a way that will surprise you. That thing you are issued that you have been dealing with for a long time, you don't even know the solution. This God is...